Hello and welcome to Tensile Ground Coffee, a few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy while having your coffee. Well I'm back at the sandbox again, this time I'm going to show you how a mechanically stabilised earth wall is constructed. So in my school design and technology class I built this little box here that I can use to construct retaining walls. So imagine the retaining wall is running along here and we have a road or a railway on the top here and a lower ground level here. We want to create this grade separation. So I can put in the simple full height panel here and I can fill the space behind to bring up the level that I want for the road or the railway. So while I'm constructing I'm holding this facing so that I can support it. And there you go, I've built that up to the height uh, behind and if I remove the support to the facing of course it just collapses which is what you would expect because there's no support for that uh, simple wall like that. There are other options such as an embedded wall with a toe going below that level or there's a reinforced concrete cantilever wall with uh, a base that might make a, a T-shape or an L-shape that will support itself that way. But there is an easier, more economical way, and actually with a lower carbon footprint as well, and that is with a mechanically stabilized earth wall. So that's what I'm going to construct next, and I'll show you how that is constructed. So now, I have this full height facing, but this time I have geogrid attached to the back through these simple hooks. That's my mechanical connection. Here's my geogrid. I've got three layers of geogrid and there's my full height facing. We have different options as well as full height facing. You can have smaller panels, you can have modular blockwork facing and for temporary walls you can even have a steel mesh. So let me put this into the box and we'll see how this one performs. So there's the same facing as before, but now we've got the geogrid. I'm just going to hold the geogrid up while I construct the wall. So, this is the first layer in. That's it. Zoom in nice and close, Brian. There we go. That's the first layer. So I can put, lay down the first layer of geogrid like that. Now let's put in the second layer of soil. There we go, flatten that out a bit. Next layer of geogrid goes down like that. Then the third layer of soil, and that goes down like that. And now we put in the, the last layer like that. And actually I forgot to support the facing, but it doesn't matter. You see With the geogrid inside, that facing now supports itself under the weight of the soil. So isn't that uh, incredible? That's a very economical way of constructing uh, a wall for a highway or a railway. But how well can it perform? Well, not only can it support the weight of the soil, let's have a look at how much weight it can support on the top as well. So we can apply quite a large surcharge on the top there and the wall should still support it to such an extent that that could actually act as a bridge abutment so we could have a bridge supported on this side and spanning across to a similar wall on the other side so let's test this out let's see how much how much weight that can support do you think it could support my body weight let's try it out here we go so i'm just applying the full weight now the leg goes up how about that that little model mechanically stabilized earth wall can support my whole body weight so scaled up imagine uh, how much load that could support it could easily support a bridge act acting as a bridge abutment and we have many case studies monitored case studies demonstrating where uh, tensile MSC walls have supported uh, bridge abutments and just to show you that there's no trickery here that is don't forget simply 
a wall panel and geogrid inside. So isn't that a remarkable structure? How well it can perform. Okay, that's all for this episode of Tensar Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you.